Today we're going to talk about one of the more controversial subjects as far as equipment goes in the bass fishing world. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Hey, before the video gets going, make sure that you punch that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We have new videos go up three times a week. And don't forget to check out our brand new blog, thebassfishinglife.com. There you will find new content posted on a regular basis as well. Well, when it comes to equipment, Bass anglers oftentimes have a lot to say and a lot of opinions about the price of rods and reels. And today I want to really dive into, are expensive rods worth the money? So that's what we're going to be talking about. Probably the first thing that we need to mention is that the term expensive is definitely relative based on your income level. And really the other factor that I think even has a larger determining role is how much you actually fish with the rod or go out and fish. And we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later. Okay, so what makes up a high dollar rod or a more expensive rod? Or I could say, why are some rods more expensive than others? And it comes down to this singular factor. Yes, we know that some maybe have better eyes, components, real seats, handles, that type of stuff, but really what it comes down to, the big difference is trying to make a rod as light as possible while still maintaining strength. Okay, let me say that again. So manufacturers, the top end rods, the higher dollar rods are lighter, but yet maintain a certain level of strength to them. So that is why those rods cost more. Anglers like to have as light as rod as they possibly can, but yet still know that rod is going to hold up when they go to set the hook and fight a fish and just all the different abuses that a rod takes throughout a fishing trip. So that is the big, big difference between a more entry level price point rod and then the top end rod is going to be the weight of the rod, yet it still maintains an acceptable level of strength to it. So that is the big difference how we get rods at different price points. I think that I offer a really unique perspective on this topic because of all of the different parts of the bass fishing industry I have worked in. Okay, obviously I've been an angler for a long time, um, fish tournaments all over the place, done television for five years, so I've got the time in on the water. So that is definitely one perspective. I also sold fishing equipment in the industry for a couple years as well, and that offers a completely different perspective. So as a diehard angler, I went into the sales end of it thinking, wow, I'm gonna sell all these really high dollar rods to these dealers all across the Midwest, and as it turns out, it's just the opposite of that. So for every high dollar rod I sold, or more expensive rod I could say, I probably sold 50 more price point rods, or maybe even more than that. It might have been a hundred to one. So I definitely bring the perspective from the sales side of it as well as what rods were best sellers, what rods were the best performers. So I have that perspective to bring to this conversation as well. And the third area of expertise or the third perspective I can bring to this is I have taught many, many, many fishing classes as well. I mean like literal classes with students, okay? They, I, I've taught adults, I've taught all kinds of beginning brand new anglers, a lot of kids just getting into the sport. So I offer that perspective as well. So I can approach this subject of expensive rods, I think from a unique perspective. So here's the first thing that I'm gonna say when it comes down to are expensive rods worth it? It really depends on what type of presentation you use most of the time. If you are more of a horizontal 
presentation type of an angler where you're throwing your crank baits, your spinner baits, um, you're throwing your bladed jigs like your chatterbait style jigs. If you're more a horizontal angler, a less expensive rod is going to serve you just fine, a rod with more parabolic action. Oftentimes those particular presentations, especially let's say for example with your crankbaits, you want a medium power rod. You want a rod that has a lot more give to it because you don't want to rip those crankbaits out of that fish's mouth with those treble hooks. So a, a medium power rod is critically important to be a successful crankbait angler. So a more price point rod that has naturally more parabolic action to it in other words, it doesn't have backbone farther towards the tip, more of the entire rod gives. Those types of presentations, if you're a horizontal angler, if that's what you do 99% of the time, you've got a lot more options as far as price is concerned on the rod market. So a more price point rod in that type of situation, you're going to be okay. Now, if you consider yourself a bottom bouncing angler or flipping and pitching um, lures into really tight, heavy cover, that is where we notice a big difference quickly. That is where you're going to want a rod that has higher sensitivity to it, in other words, less material, but yet still maintains that durability or that strength. That is where I have noticed a huge difference in a more price point rod. You're still going to catch fish. Don't get me wrong. You're still going to catch fish. But the way you want to look at it is what fish are you missing? because you don't even know they are there. And that's how you have to approach this. Let me tell you a quick little story. So I was up in the boundary waters one time, um, fishing in a canoe with uh, another angler and we were fishing smallmouth up. They were catching largemouth, but mainly smallmouth. And I was out fishing this other angler, probably 15 or 20 to one. I was catching 15 or 20 smallmouth for every one smallmouth that they were catching. And they were getting very frustrated naturally. And I'm going to tell you right now, it had nothing to do with the presentation I was doing, the lure that I was using, or the, the fish in the lake. This lake was stuffed with fish. I mean, this was one of those 100 fish day types of places. So I handed them my rod a higher sensitivity rod, a rod that is up that price point scale a little bit from what they were using, and they immediately started catching more fish. And this person I was fishing with said, well, I had no idea I was getting this many bites. And that has to do with a rod that has less material in it, but still maintains that strength and the sensitivity. Therefore, it's going to be a little bit more expensive rod. So if you're fishing bottom bouncing baits, if you're fishing, flipping and pitching into cover, that is where you're going to want to spend a little bit more money on a rod. If it's horizontal presentations, you're probably going to be okay with a wider range of offerings on the marketplace. Another key benefit to a rod that costs a little bit more money is the accuracy. And, and here's how that happens. When you have a rod with a nice soft tip, but yet it still has a good backbone to it, you can really put those baits where you want them. So your accuracy with a rod that's a little bit higher up that price point is definitely going to improve than if you're trying to pitch and flip into tight cover with a very parabolic rod that's got a lot of whip to it. You're not going to be as accurate. So that is the other big difference that I see as far as dollars invested in the rod and what you can do with them as an angler. Okay, there's two more things I want to cover as far as this topic of should you spend more money on the rod. The first is how often do you go out and fish? If you only fish five or six times a year, spending two, three, four hundred dollars on a rod is not going to make a lot of sense unless you have the expendable income to do so. Now, if you fish 50, 60, 80, 100, 200 days a year, you know, maybe you're a guide or, or maybe you're retired and you're out there several times a week, then it makes more sense 
to put more money into your ride. You're going to get more of a return on your investment. I, I kind of look at it this way. When I travel out of state and I have to buy an out-of-state fishing license, and let's say it's $30, $40 for an out-of-state license, and I only catch one fish, that was an expensive fish. I was like, man, I can't believe I spent 30 bucks on that. If I catch 100 fish, well, all of a sudden my return on that investment is a lot better. So you have to approach a fishing rod the same way. If you're out all the time and you're using that rod several times a week, it makes more sense to put more money into it. It's a lot like a mechanic buying a higher quality tool for their garage than a mechanic that only works on the weekends. There's a big difference in the amount of time that directly factors into the investment that you get from that rod. The last thing that you want to take into consideration is what type of fishing do you do most of the time? If you are a crankbait angler, there's no need to go out and drop $300 on a jig rod. Okay, it just doesn't make sense if you never pick it up. If you consider yourself a jig angler and that's what you do 99% of the time, well, yeah, then it makes sense to spend a little bit more money on that rod. So take those things into consideration. Um, how much time do you spend on the water? Are you doing horizontal presentations or more bottom bouncing presentations? What type of angler do you consider yourself as far as the type of lures that you throw? It really comes down to spending time on the water and the type of fishing that you like to do. So I hope some of these different factors help you make a decision as far as whether or not it's worth it to buy a more expensive rod. And really, you know, it comes down to personal preference and you know, what type of angler that you are. Go ahead and drop in the comments down below your own experiences and your own opinions on this particular topic. And really, really, really what it all boils down to, are you happy with your purchase? If you are, that is all that matters. Hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you might make a difference in their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.